Brett Robbins writes, so are you for or against gay marriage? What about at the state level? How would you vote on it in your community? Well, my position, Brett, on gay marriage has been absolutely clear. It is exactly the same as my position on abortion. I promise I will never have one. All right, so when it comes to things like this, if you don't want a gay marriage, don't have one. It's as simple as that. But what is a gay marriage? It's really gay, obviously. No, come on, think about it for a second. A marriage, now when we talk about it in terms of today, a legal creation of a marriage, this is a legal fiction created by government. And for you to not know the history of this is probably because you went to a government-run school, and I didn't find this out until after I got away from government schools entirely. Marriage as an institution was originally created by government in order to prevent marriages that they didn't want, namely interracial marriages. So the fact that we had a system that universally, just a couple decades ago, banned gay marriage proves that the institution of marriage existed primarily to prevent and discourage gay people from getting married. This is insanely criminal. The thing is, the state creates a set of special privileges that people who engage in their state-sanctioned marriages enjoy. However, in today's day and age, it has become absolutely clear that the disadvantages far outweigh the advantages. Like, gee, honey, I love you so much. Let's bring government into this relationship. Oh my God, are you kidding? And when it comes to having children, whether you're adopting or making them yourselves, doesn't matter. When it comes to having children, if you're married, what you're doing is deliberately inviting the most violent, evil people in the world into your relationship and giving them, I guess, legal privileges, however you want to describe them, of authority over your children. That's child abuse. Really, it, it, is, it is child abuse to have a child with a birth certificate from government. To, to, to tell that child that it has to be registered without any choice or consent of its own. Now, you might think this sounds crazy because this is something that is very rarely done, even among libertarians, and I highly encourage people to do this if they're having children from now on. And there, there's a growing movement to have children off the record, to have children free, to respect their rights, to say we are going to have you without paperwork from government at all. Because if you have a child and you, and you do it in a hospital and you get a birth certificate and you get a social security number, what you're doing is giving the government ownership privileges over your child. You are inviting the government to force vaccines and shots on your child. You are neglecting your responsibility as a parent. You are opening it up to abuse. So yes, having a child with government paperwork is a form of child abuse. And being legally married only invites that abuse into your home even more. Child Protective Services ripping families apart is one of the most destructive forces in America today. I hear horror stories almost every single day around social media. This has become a thing, fighting CPS. Now, for the issue of gay marriage, back to the question here. A marriage, and I'm a fan of marriage as, as an institution, not as a government licensed program, but as an institution, the concept of marriage of, of two or more people coming together voluntarily, pledging to spend the rest of their lives together. That's a beautiful thing. In fact, I'm a, I'm a big fan of weddings. I think weddings are amazing. That, that you make this sacred vow before your God, if you have one, before your community, before your friends and your family. Really, that should be the ultimate measure of the accountability for a contract. You know, when you sign a, a, an employment contract, you don't you know, have a big ceremony about it and say, look, we're agreeing to this because, you know, maybe it's not necessary for something as simple as that. But for something as rich and complex and beautiful as a marriage, as a commitment between 
individuals to spend the rest of their lives together. I think it's entirely appropriate to have something that is a form of a contract. Now, it doesn't have to be written down. It could be as simple as the statement of vows, and really that's all it needs to be. Again, in front of friends, family, and community. I think that's a beautiful thing. So, am I for or against gay marriage? It really doesn't matter what my personal preferences are. I guess you could say I'm for it, but only for the people who think that it's right for them, who engage in it voluntarily without getting the government involved. Now, unfortunately, because the government is violently taken control of so many aspects of our lives. Sometimes there are distinct advantages. So I don't want to say that you're wrong in every case for getting government married. Let's call it that. You're not just getting married, you're getting government married because you're also getting married to the government. But if you need to, to get access to health care or some other specific benefits, then go ahead and do it. But please separate that marriage from the government marriage and understand the difference and that your agreement with your spouse or spouses is between you and you alone, not a third party, not some violent institution that wants to come in and control your relationship. No, I really truly want to get married myself. And I have a, a wonderful girlfriend right now and we are talking about it and working towards it and doing it in our own way on our own time. And when we do get married, we're going to have a big wedding and a nice big ceremony. Oh my gosh. Don't I just sound so hopelessly romantic right now? So I'm a big fan of that. And for the gay people who want that, I want you to have all of your rights to have that fully truly, deeply respected by everyone. Thank you to YouTube for hosting this video and for being an essential part of human progress by making video hosting available worldwide to everyone on the internet. However, the next phase in human progress is here with Steemit.com and their video hosting alternative blockchain-based solutions, including DTube. And you can find that through Steemit.com as well as my own page there, at Adam Kokesh. This is a decentralized blockchain-based social media network that pays you fairly for your content. Already, I'm regularly making more there with a single post than I do from an entire month on YouTube. So please join us on the next frontier of the information revolution at steamit.com. And if you want help getting a leg up there, I'm happy to re-steam your posts and make sure that no one is starting from scratch. Just email me one of your favorite posts at adam at and we'll share it on my feed.